one last time. Some things never change. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 facts about Logan. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at interesting, trivial facts surrounding the third Wolverine film. Trust me, I know how these things play out. Oh, because you're from the future? No, because of these. Number 10. It's based on the graphic novel, Old Man Logan. This X-Men film primarily draws inspiration from Wolverine, Old Man Logan by writer Mark Miller and artist Steve McNiven. This eight-issue storyline centers on a wary Wolverine in a post-apocalyptic world. Likewise, Wolverine's age will catch up with him in Logan. Taking place in a bleak, near future, our broken-down hero is forced to come out of hiding as a new wave of mutants rises into power. Granted, this won't be a shot-for-shot -shot adaptation of Old Man Logan, as 20th Century Fox doesn't have the rights for the Hulk, Hawkeye, or Red Skull. The parallels are certainly there, however, and hopefully, the source material's poignant themes will shine through in this film. We got ourselves an X-Men fan. Maybe a quarter of it happened. And not like this. Number 9. There's less CGI. Where the previous two Wolverine movies could get pretty over the top, this final installment will be aiming for a more human feel, according to director James Mangold. The filmmakers want to tap into Wolverine's vulnerable side, revealing that there's more to this character than an unstoppable badass. That hurt. To achieve this effect, they decided to cut back on the CGI and green screens. In an interview with Empire, Hugh Jackman described the film as the story of a man who is struggling with mortality and legacy, and whether the world has been better off with him or without him. By putting more emphasis on character development and less on CGI action, Logan could be the Wolverine movie fans have been waiting for. Number 8. Walk the Line Connection Director James Mangold previously helmed 2013's The Wolverine, making Logan his second X-Men feature. Outside of this franchise, Mangold is perhaps best known for directing the Johnny Cash biopic, Walk the Line. In the trailer for Logan, Johnny Cash's version of Hurt can notably be heard. Where is she? Beneath the stage. She's like you. Of time. Very much like you. Aside from being a cool reference to the director's previous work, the song perfectly sums up the footage represented in the trailer. Touching base on themes of sorrow, isolation, and redemption, Hurt epitomizes the emotional turmoil Wolverine will experience throughout the film. I would find a way. Logan. Still have time. Number 7. Patrick Stewart's first major role in a Wolverine movie. Two days on the road, only one meal, and hardly any sleep. She's 11, I'm f***ing 90. Patrick Stewart made his first debut as Charles Xavier over a decade and a half ago in the first X-Men movie. Over the years, Professor X has acted as Logan's friend and mentor. For some reason, though, he hasn't had a significant role in any of the Wolverine spin-offs. Sure, he had uncredited cameos in X-Men Origins Wolverine, you're safe now. And The Wolverine, but neither of those films delved into his relationship with Logan. This film marks Stewart's first major role in a Wolverine movie. Older and frailer, Xavier will struggle to control his powers while also dealing with memory loss. Acting as Xavier's caregiver, Logan is forced to confront the inevitability of aging and change. Charles, the world is not the same as it was. Mutants. They're gone now. Number 6. Patrick Stewart's last time as Professor X. She needs our help. Someone will come along. Someone has come along. While we're on the subject of Patrick Stewart, it's also worth mentioning that this will reportedly be his final performance as Charles Xavier. During a chat with ITV, Stewart stated, I would imagine this is probably the end of the franchise for me. Of course, Stewart also said, The thing about science fiction and fantasy is that you can never ever say it's the end, it's over. After all, Xavier got disintegrated in X-Men The Last Stand and still managed to live another day. How is this possible? As I told you a long time ago, you're not the only one with gifts. But don't worry, we still have James McAvoy, right? We're pretty sure that's legit. These multiple timelines are so confusing. So this is what becomes of us. Eric was right. Humanity does this to us. Number 5. Hugh Jackman took a pay cut. I know what you are. You lost your money, you keep this up, you lose something else. 
For X-Men Origins Wolverine, Hugh Jackman was reportedly paid $20 million. He received the same amount to reprise his role in The Wolverine. For Logan, however, Jackman agreed to take a pay cut. Director James Mangold broke the news during a 40-minute screening of Logan, reportedly saying that Jackman accepted a smaller salary to secure the movie's R rating. It's unknown exactly how much money Jackman walked away from, but Logan is currently budgeted at $127 million. You know, you gotta pay for that, right? Since it's a lower price tag than some other X-Men films, there's less risk involved for the studio, although it's now been established that R-rated superhero movies can still be a financial success, F-bombs and all. You're probably thinking, my boyfriend said this was a superhero movie, but that guy in the red suit just turned that other guy into a fucking kebab. Number four, another Game of Thrones actor joins the X-Men family. In Logan, Swazi English actor Richard E. Grant will star as a villainous mad scientist named Xander Rice. Grant might not be a household name, although Game of Thrones fans likely know him best for playing Bravosi performer Izambaro. Grant is actually the fourth Game of Thrones actor to appear in the X-Men movies. Ed Screen, who had a recurring role throughout the show's third season, starred as Ajax in Deadpool. Sophie Turner, who broke into stardom as Sansa Stark, played a young Jean Grey in X-Men Apocalypse. Peter Dinklage, who masterfully brought Tyrion Lannister to life, portrayed Boulevard Trask in X-Men Days of Future Past. My machines don't make mistakes. What are you? Does this mean Logan could have a red wedding? <laughs> Number three, it's a reboot of sorts. Gene. Hey, Logan. Logan has been cited as the third Wolverine movie, but it's really more of a reboot than a sequel. Both X-Men Origins Wolverine and The Wolverine were set in this franchise's original timeline. That's a lot of blood. I thought you were done being a hero. After the events of X-Men Days of Future Past, though, an alternate timeline was created. Logan is part of this new continuity, which also includes Deadpool and X-Men Apocalypse. Speaking of which, the post credit scene in Apocalypse might have hinted at what's to come in Logan. Although this may be the end of an era, it can also be seen as a new beginning. Number 2. The R Rating Holy f As mentioned before, movie studios are usually reluctant to throw big bucks at R-rated productions. Since younger audience can't get into restricted movies without adult supervision, studios prefer to play it safe with a PG-13 rating. R-rated blockbusters are making a comeback, however, and that's arguably thanks to Deadpool. I've never said this, but don't swallow. This X-Men spinoff was a box office sensation, grossing over $700 million for just under $60 million. I, I never carry wallow while I'm working. Ruins the lines of my suit. Oh, but uh, how about a uh, crisp high five? Many assumed that the success of Deadpool influenced 20th Century Fox to go for an R rating with Logan. According to producer Simon Kinberg, though, the third Wolverine film was always going to be rated R. In any case, it's probably safe to say that Deadpool further encouraged Fox to stand by this decision. Oh, I'm touching myself tonight. Number one, Hugh Jackman's last time as Wolverine. You should take a moment. Feel it. You still have time. Logan will not only be Hugh Jackman's ninth appearance as Wolverine, but also his last. Jackman has decided to retire from this iconic role for a variety of reasons. For starters, the Australian actor is turning 50 in a couple of years. I've been in a lot of wars. Jackman has also been treated for skin cancer on multiple occasions recently. Believe it or not, Jerry Seinfeld even played a role in this decision, indirectly influencing Jackman to go out on a high note. Showmanship, George. When you hit that high note, you say goodnight and walk off. Jackman certainly had a phenomenal run, playing the character over the course of 17 years. Hopefully, he'll get a fitting send-off and pass on his claws to a worthy successor. Or perhaps retire the character indefinitely. Go f*** yourself. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite fact about Logan? For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. This is what life looks like. People who love each other. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.